Now that we near the end of the image, it's time to make a few tonal adjustments, but to do so very selectively. I have two tools that I like. I'll often add a curve, which allows me to target different exposure areas quite precisely. And for the ultimate in control, I'll use dodge and burn to literally paint in lighter shadows. Here's how. Let's start by taking a look at the tone curve. Now the tone curve is quite versatile and can be used for color correction tasks. For example, if I want a little bit more green in the middle, I can start to lift that up and you see how it shifts the greens, but be careful and be subtle. Let's double click to reset that. However, if you click on the white icon here, you're making a change across the board. And this is pretty typical. What I'm gonna do is click to add a couple of control points. And you also have the ability here to shift that ever so slightly with these handles. What's often done is a little lift to the shadows and a little dip to the highlights. And that works quite nicely. Let's go ahead and shift that back there ever so slightly. Or other times people will go the opposite way, pulling down the shadows slightly to get a little bit of richness in them and then roll the highlights up a little bit towards the higher end to get a nice bright highlight in the clouds. And that works quite well. These little midpoints here are quite useful if you need to shift the shape of the overall curve. And I like that there. That little S curve has just done a nice job of adding a good bit of contrast in just the right places. Now, if you have to get super specific, make sure you take a look at Dodge and Burn. This tool is all about painting. Click the Start Painting button and you'll see two major options, Lighten and Darken. Now, you can adjust the overall size of the brush as well as the intensity or strength I'm gonna paint with a lower intensity here, but lighten the rock face. And as I paint with multiple strokes, that helps bring out the mountains. Let's go with a little smaller brush here and paint a little bit on some of these vegetation areas. There we go. And you see I can lighten those up. Similarly, I can choose darken, and this can be useful to darken down areas, maybe the path here a little bit towards the bottom or in the corners just slightly. Make sure you pay attention to your strength and your size, but this can be really useful as you want to paint in with light or exposure. This allows me to get super precise and to start to really darken or lighten areas to bring those out. For example, let's paint across the surface here of the mountain to tone that down. And you see it makes a nice change. If I want to, I can paint a little bit here on the peak and brighten that up. My general suggestion though, is work with a lower strength setting. If you realize that it's something you don't want, just choose the erase option and you can now paint away to remove that change. So if I don't want this change down here, I can erase it before it is applied. Now, once you're ready, click the done button. It's right up here in the top toolbar. What that will do is apply it and you'll see that those light changes are added into the image itself. Now, a lot of times, I find that after doing that, it's a bit strong. If we toggle that on and off, we can really judge the change in the scene. Rather than having to go back in and erase and start over, just use the amount slider. Again, it's often easier to overdo it and then back it off a little bit afterwards. That's really the secret to a lot of HDR. Take the time to master these tools. Being able to use a tone curve as well as dodge and burn literally puts you in control over where the shadows and light fall. And after all, with HDR photography, it's about just that, the dynamic range, which is all about light and exposure. By taking the time to master these tools, you can get the precise results that you want.